Hey everybody, this is a quick introduction to vectors and scalars, two different types of numbers. Uh, before I tell you what a vector is, I'm just going to give you an example of a vector versus a scalar, and we can kind of figure out the difference after that. So uh, if you're on the highway, you see a speed limit of 50 miles an hour. Uh, that tells you how fast you're going to go. Speed is a scalar number. However, if you want to, if you say 80 meters per second east, that's a velocity, that is a vector. Distance, travel 10 kilometers, that is a scalar. Displacement, travel two blocks north, that is a vector. Uh, temperature is measured 33 degrees Fahrenheit or 305 kelvins, that is a scalar. Uh, force, 500 newtons at 45 degrees above the horizontal, that is a vector. So you may, uh, you may start to notice the difference here, here. A scalar is just a normal number. It can have units, but it's just a standard number. Well, a vector has a direction attached to it. And our more formal definition of vectors and scalars, a vector is a quantity with both a magnitude and a direction. And a scalar is a quantity with only a magnitude. It doesn't have direction. Magnitude is a word that throws students off, but all it means is the size or strength of something, the size or strength of a number. So if we go back to these first scalars and vectors, the speed of 50, meter, or 50 miles per hour, that's, that's just a magnitude. For our velocity vector over here, 80 meters per second east, this is the magnitude of the velocity, and this is the direction. So magnitude is just the number part. Direction is just the direction part. Uh, vectors, well, vectors are important because if you want to, uh, well, if you want to tell someone how to get somewhere, you need to not just tell them uh, how far to go, you also need to tell them the direction. Direction is important. Things do point in particular directions. So that's, uh, that's why vectors are so important. Uh, and since vectors point in a particular direction, we represent them with arrows. So for example, these are a couple of arrows representing different velocity vectors. Here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Here we have 140 meters per second northeast. Our arrow points to the northeast. 60 meters per second east, our arrow points east. 80 meters per second south, our arrow points south. Um, the length of the arrow is proportional to the magnitude of the vector. And notice that these are all scaled the same way. So one square unit is equal to 20 meters per second. The direction of the arrow is just the direction. Um, so vectors can, well, yeah, points in the correct direction. Um, so if we draw out a vector, that pretty much fully represents the magnitude and direction of that vector. Vectors can be translated, that means slid around, as long as their magnitude and direction is not changed. As long as we don't change their size, um, as long as we don't change the direction that they're pointing, because they still have the same magnitude and direction. Let's do one example. Okay, city blocks are arranged in a grid of 800 feet by 800 feet squares. Catherine starts at an intersection, then walks four blocks east, two blocks north, and three blocks west. How far east of her starting point is she? How far north of her starting point is she? Uh, how far away from her starting point is she? So this is going to be a vector problem. We need more than just the distances she traveled, so I'm going to sketch out a diagram. She starts out at an intersection, and this is not going to be to scale, but that's fine. She travels four blocks east. So I'm going to draw a rightward arrow to represent east. Since it's four blocks, and each block is 800 by 800, it's just 800 by 4 feet, or 800 times 4, which is 3,200 feet. Then she goes two blocks north. Two blocks is going to be 1,600 feet. Then she goes three blocks west. That's going to, whoops, that's going to be 2,400 feet feet. So uh, we should be able to figure out how far east of her starting point is she. Well, she traveled 3,200 feet east and 2,400 feet west. 
So we can just do 3,200 minus 2,400 feet. 800 feet east of this start. How far north of the start is she? Well, she only traveled 1,600 feet north, so that's easy. 1,600 feet north of the start. And then how far away from the starting point is she? Well, if she started out here, and she ends up right here, her overall resultant displacement vector is this blue arrow here. So we just need to find the length of this arrow here. We can actually use the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to sketch out a diagram. We know that her overall distance east is uh, 800 feet. And we know her overall distance north is 1,600 feet. I'm going to label this uh, resultant displacement from her starting point, S. So if we want to solve for S, that's a right triangle. We can do S squared equals 800 feet squared plus 1,600 feet squared. So then S is equal to the square root of 800 feet squared plus 1,600 feet squared. And then we just plug that into a calculator, which I am about to do right now. That gives me 1788-ish, 0.85 feet. So to correct sig figs, which would probably be two sig figs, 1800 feet from her starting position. That said, that's our introduction to vectors. Remember, a vector has a magnitude and a direction. That's a number and a direction, while a scalar only has a number. It doesn't point in any northeast, southwest, up, down direction. Bye.